Uh, welcome in, everybody. Guys, thank you so much for being here for another Plus One interview. If you, this is your first time being here, uh, it's kind of a podcast style situation. So sit back, enjoy. There are no alerts on. Uh, you can't ask live questions. We got questions ahead of time. If you want to check out more of Jane, you can do the exclamation plus one command, and that will send you to Jane's Twitter and Instagram to follow along on what's coming up next with Jane. Uh, but hello, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure, Kate. It's so nice to see you again. Yes. Just a, yeah, total treat. The last time at, well, the first time and the last time we met was at the BAFTAs, wasn't it? A couple of years ago. Yes, we got to meet at the BAFTAs, BAFTA 2021. Um, and that was, yeah, that was a, an incredible experience. And you were so, you were so kind. You were just, you were so nice and so humble and so positive. And for those of you who do not know, um, Jane actually was there, uh, nominated for a BAFTA for a leading role in a performance, uh, performance in a leading, did I say that correct? Le performance yeah. in a leading leading role. Yeah. That's there you, the one. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll talk about it here in a, in a little bit, but actually ended up winning, <laughs> which is incredible. That is such a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. Um, for those of you who may not know you, could you give us a little short intro into who you are and what you do? Sure thing. Well, uh, my name is Jane Perry, as Katie said, and I am um, an actress and I uh, work in theater, film, TV, and also in voice acting, uh, particularly in games. I do a lot of acting in games. Um, and I've done performance capture in games as well as just sort of, you know, what you might call straight forward voice, just me in a voiceover studio. Um, and I have acted, I, I actually don't know how many games I've acted in, but I'm going to guess and say between 80 and 100. And um, I've been doing this for a long, long time. I, I graduated from drama school in 1994, I think. And voiceover has always sort of run alongside my career i started in the theater and and voice was always sort of sort of there a lot you know it's kind of in the background when i was doing theater and um i am canadian i moved to britain in 2003 so i've been here for 20 years now yeah. um and i i have a great dane i he's lying on the bed behind me so if you hear he's sleeping he if you hear snoring it's not a breathing <laughs> issue with me it i swear to god it's the dog back there <laughs> so anyway, yeah that's me yeah i love that and and, and first off congrats on uh, boulders gate 3 that is uh amazing congratulations for that that is your most recent game correct that has come out with your voice in it yes, now it is I have not played it yet. There are several people in the chat who have, but could you tell us for fo folks who are planning to play it where they might see your character appear in the game if it's not too like spoilery? Yeah, sure thing. Well, um, I've really been warned by Larry and Studios to not, you know, give up any spoilers. <laughs> oh, okay, but well then. <laughs> I think it's okay for me to say, I play Mistra in the game and um, she she sh she's referred to a lot in the game so as you journey through the game you'll hear her spoken about and then we do finally get to meet her um at the end of the game in a, a really um interesting scene oh. with one of the main characters um and i think that's all i'm allowed to tell you cool. apart from the fact that she's she's the goddess of magic Ooh. and um so you know it's always fun to play these sort of rather mystical you know characters it's great to be a goddess for a day yeah and i mean that game was highly anticipated and i mean it's just like it's going off the charts i think it's the where did i i saw neil post something about how it was like the most bought game or something ever uh, on one of the consoles i can't remember which one it was but like it's i mean it's amazing so that's incredible that you're a part of that um yeah i felt really lucky you know i was really brought in at the very last minute so neil you know worked on that game for years mm -hmm. and uh you know all the the sort of lead cast members in that game have been working on that game for a very long time i worked on it for one day <laughs> <laughs> the penultimate day of recording and and motion capture yeah. uh, performance capture filming um so i just kind of snuck in there heck and, yeah and, and, well, that's yeah. all you need sometimes just sneak in there and and that's great yeah. um yeah. so Complaints. We've got tons of questions from this community. My community was so excited to see you on the stream and to ask questions. They're huge fans of you and your work. So um, yeah, thank you again, everybody who asked questions. I really appreciate it. So Jane, when did you realize you wanted to be an actor? 
And then a um, little piggyback question. Is there any advice you would be able to give to somebody wanting to pursue acting? Yeah, sure thing. So I was, uh, so I grew up in Canada, as I say, and I, um, I went to Quebec uh, just after finishing high school to really, um, to, to, I guess, basically to work on my French language skills and, and to really kind of become bilingual. And I was in this summer program at the, a university in Trois-Rivières, and um, we had to take a sort of option, a lang pra an option which would allow you to practice your French language skills, and I chose French. And we did a, a play by Molière, Le Faubert de Scapin. And I was, you know, on stage with my fellow students and the students were in the audience and, and we were performing this comedy. And I said a line and the audience laughed. And it was like this little bundle of energy collected up in that laughter and it went and it just landed right in my heart. And I felt this sense of like, oh, gosh, this is what I want to do. What a wonderful thing to be able to make a group of people laugh and um and so i i started to pursue it after that i started doing community theater and then i just you know i was a bit afraid i think of being an actor you know because of the uncertainty and it's not a proper job and all that stuff my parents were a bit like oh god i don't know about this but i just thought you know i, I only live once and i really i want to be an actress so i'm gonna go to school and study acting and that's what i did mm -hmm. and that was the beginnings of of my career so when I was in drama school, one of my teachers said to me, you know, Jane, the thing that successful actors have in common is tenacity. They just keep going and you don't give up. Don't you, you, there's going to be hard times like there is with everything, incidentally. So don't let those hard times get you down. Don't let go of your dream. Keep working on your craft, working on your skills and your training, but see yourself playing the long game as an actor because a lot of people will just fall by the wayside maybe they realize it's actually not what they wanted or maybe they start as an actor and they think you know what i'd like to be a director or i'd like to um, be a writer a screenwriter whatever so sometimes acting is the entry into other areas in our profession um, but if you really want it just keep going um, and that's you know that alongside working on your craft and your skills as an actor those are my two real big bits of advice I love that that was great there's uh, people in the chat are saying how great of advice that is so uh, mm -hmm. thank you to the the teacher and thank you for you for keeping that with you for yeah. so long um, yeah. that's so so uh, I just went to Toronto and uh, I went to Montreal for the first time and I loved it it was great yeah. So, and that's the area that you, was that, is that the area you're from? Are you from Ontario? Well, no, actually I, I grew up in Calgary and then oh. I went to theater school in, um, in Vancouver at a school called Studio 58, which is a fantastic, uh, drama training program, like a three-year conservatoire type yeah. thingy. Uh, yeah. Wow. That's so cool. But, uh, um, yeah. yeah. And I been love, to... you've been to Sorry, Toronto, <laughs> you've been to Toronto and Ontario and yeah, I worked in the theater in Toronto, um, in Ontario, rather. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of great theater, um, you know, well, everywhere in Canada, but in uh, just around that area, there's a lot of rep theater companies, um, and I worked there. Oh, I love that. I, I also have, um, I just think it's so cool when I meet somebody who has theater as their, like, that's, that's their background. And um, it's just, because that's my background as well, theater is my background, and I just feel like when you meet other actors who have theater as their background, like you speak the same language, you know, like mm -hmm. we understand, like we, we had the same kind of upbringing in this, in the, in the theater or in the acting world per se. Yeah. And uh, so I just have massive respect and I want to hear about uh, more of that. And especially like your Shakespeare experience. Um, mm -hmm. What, like, I don't know. I love that. Shakespeare was kind of for me, like, I love Shakespeare. I love the language. I loved performing Shakespeare. I haven't done theater in a long time, but um, yeah. So I would love to hear more about your Shakespeare experience and if you have a favorite role. Oh yeah. Well, I I um I did a little bit of Shakespeare in Canada. I played uh, Rosalind in As You Like It. And that was definitely my fave yeah. role. She's such um the thing I love about Rosalind is she makes things happen, and frequently you know as a woman in Shakespeare you end up playing a lot of roles that are reactive 
Um, but there's a couple of them that make things happen. Lady Macbeth comes to mind. Um, Viola mm -hmm. uh, in, in Twelfth Night. And, um, and so that was, you know, wonderful to, to play this woman who's really like, I am, she has, she's a survivor, right? She gets kicked out of the, 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 the Duke's sort of kingdom and she has to make it on her own and she figures this out. And um, I just, I really actually fell in love with her. I felt when I was on stage, I played the role twice, speaking that language, I was in a state of love. Like, you know, when you fall in love with somebody, you're like, oh, I, I feel so great and I life is good and you're fabulous. And that's how I felt on stage um, doing Shakespeare, playing Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. The language is extraordinary. And, and you know, um, you know, I think when you do a, a Shakespearean production, you can play these roles for months and months and months and still find new things and interesting things because it's so rich mm -hmm. and so interesting. And I actually, when I teach voice acting, I, I refer back to Shakespeare a lot because I think there's so many lessons in playing Shakespeare that we can apply to voice work, in particular, the specificity of, of the text, driving things through. You know, that's why Shakespeare can be part of an actor's training, even if they don't want to go on and mm -hmm. be in Shakespeare in productions. They might have other hopes and aspirations, but there's a lot to learn in the rhetoric of that language so how to deal with language um, that is incredibly useful for voice actors um, so if somebody has a reference point for Shakespeare and I'm working with them I will I'll bring that into the conversation because there's um as you say Katie coming from a theater background there's perhaps a, a shared vocabulary that we might have uh, having worked on Shakespeare perhaps other um, you know classical theater texts but um, I just love it. Love it to death. Oh, and this is a question from the community. Do you prefer in person, like traditional acting or voice motion capture acting in games? Hmm. Well, I think each one has their sort of, you know, good points. I, my spiritual home, if I'm to be honest, is the stage. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's what my training was in. And that's where I really have had some extraordinary experiences and that one-on-one -on -one interchange between live performance live performer and audience is unbeatable mm -hmm. in my opinion however when you're in a game as you know katie and, and i'm sure many of the people who are attending this uh, podcast know there's there's so much creativity there so you can end up playing these incredible characters that have these massive journeys because we look at the journeys that games take and that is so alluring as well, because it really does put you in a, you know, very creative state. Mm -hmm. And, and there's lots of peaks and valleys, lots of different experiences that these characters go through, uh, which is super fun to, um, to dance with and, and, and wrestle with. Yeah, I, uh, I've always, whenever I've approached with that question, you know, being being in a in a theatrical show and having that character you're literally that character for two hours sometimes plus you know with no stop yeah. you know depending on how you take it you know but you're that person you're in their shoes you're in their journey and you're living it and performing it and sharing it for two hours but with everything else you know especially games i mean you're in game for three years <laughs> you may go into the <laughs> studio and then two months later you go back another time it's it's different it's definitely different yeah. um it is. Yeah. All right. Here are all of the video game questions you guys have asked. So we're going to dive in uh, to Ghost Recon Wildlands. What inspiration did you have for your character, Karen Bowman? She's one of my favorites ever. Such a fun character. Mm. Oh, I'm so glad you like Karen Bowman. She's so she is a great character, isn't she? I absolutely adore her. Um, I didn't really... Linda Hamilton slightly comes to mind when I mm. think of the kind of woman that she is. I love Linda Hamilton. I just, I love all those really strong women that are like super fit mm -hmm. and super smart and they can just, you know, <laughs> like they're, yeah, I, I love that. I love that strength. Yeah. So Karen is, is sort of somebody who has that, but she's, she's kind of fearless in a way. And, um, so I guess as inspiration, I just took, a, I, 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 maybe it was a kind of 
um, melange of different women who I think are really strong and smart and, and on the ball. Um, and then of course, you know, where I really do end up taking inspiration when I'm working, I take it from the text and, and, and what the writer is offering me and, and telling me about her. Um, and so whatever comes through in the text, I will um, really rely on that quite heavily to create that character so that the character is really true to the vision of, of the author. Mm -hmm. and, and that is probably the most inspiring um, thing of all, um, if that answers the question. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, all right, this next one, they say, can you please tell Miss Perry that I think she's the coolest? So you are oh. the coolest. <laughs> How Thank did you, you um, and this might be a similar, this might be similar to, to the question that you just answered, but how did you prepare when you played Rogue in Cyberpunk 2077? Yeah, yeah well, it's interesting. Okay, so one of the things about, so for Rogue, uh, for Karen Bowman, I did not do the performance capture. It was just me in the voice booth. And when it's just you in the voice booth, you don't actually have a script in advance. You get your, you get the text that you're going to be working on pretty much 24 hours prior to the session. So you might get it the day before. Um, and so it's then very hard to prepare because you don't know what you're preparing for. Um, now, if you're doing performance capture, motion capture, that's more traditional theater, film, TV kind of scenario. You will get the script in advance, A, because you have to learn the lines, and 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 B, because you'll be acting with others. So you, you kind of know the arc for the character in advance, and you can prepare for that. So for Rogue and Cyberpunk, my preparation, um, and I've said this a few times in, in podcasts, really is about figuring out how I can be in a state of readiness, how I can walk into the voice booth being prepared and present for whatever comes my way. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the voice booth, you have a performance director who is working very closely with the director of the game. They will set the context and the scene for you. And so my job is to be ready to listen to that and metabolize the direction into a performance in the moment cold reading the script and and that's kind of it so in a nutshell preparing for straightforward voice work is about being in a state of readiness um and that's kind of a weird thing to accept sometimes as an actor because we love preparing mm -hmm. we love doing the research we love thinking about things and analyzing why did she do this why did she do that and 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 this sort of still ha happens but it happens in a millisecond as opposed to maybe taking a you know, a week or a month or whatever, it happens very fast. Yeah, I always find that very interesting um, because, yeah, you, I mean, I've gotten the the script day of, you know, and, and it's like, how, like, what are you supposed to do? And yeah, it's, and you make that split second to be, this is the, this is the voice. This is how they sound, I guess. Like, this is the split second decision of how this person sounds and now that's it. It's, it's, yeah. it's wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, isn't it, Katie? And, and so also yeah. part of the preparation is is to to know that you have to trust your first instinct mm -hmm. and that your first instinct is probably going to be spot on. And then to just be confident in that. And, and and if your performance director says, great, then go, just go and trust mm -hmm. everything that you come up with, you know, until they say, that's not quite right. Let's change it a little bit. It's okay. You can be flexible and shift things around, but it is about trusting that first instinct. And, and just don't second guess yourself. And this is a great, this is a great sort of life skill in a way. And it's a great actor skill, even when you do have lots of time to prepare to just trust, you know, the, the creative impulses and the creative voices that, that inform how you're going to do something mm -hmm. because it's probably, it's probably rooted in something that's, that's right. Yeah. And also like you, you talk about trusting, like for me personally, that was what I needed. That was one of the things I needed to work on was making sure that like, okay, just trust what I'm doing. The director's not saying anything. So it must be okay. Yeah. If the director yeah. is not saying anything, you know, like, and it's some, we want that feedback, right? We want just like a good job. You <laughs> just something to like get in our heads to let us know that, okay, we are doing a good job. But sometimes depending on the director, there yeah. might not be anything, but as long as they're yeah. not saying, you know, this isn't good <laughs> redo it, then trust. <laughs> Totally, totally. Because directors have so many other things to think about. Yes. So if they're not going, uh oh, 
uh, or, you know, commenting one way or the other. And then, yeah, you're good. you can believe <laughs> yeah, that you're good. Definitely. Is there anything for cyberpunk for Rogue? Is there anything you would have changed about her story at all? Hmm. Um... Good question. I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I, gosh, I wish I could have that person who asked the question. I'd love to ask them if there is anything they would like to do about her. If that person uh, is in the chat right now and that was your question, let me know. Let me know. And we can come back to it. I, you know, I'd like to, I think I'd like to uh, explore more about Rogue as a younger person, we, we do get to see some insight into who she was, but um, as a younger person, but I think I'd like to know a bit, like she's so hard, right? I'd like to know why, uh, just a bit more about that, the journey from, you know, being who she was to, to who she ends up. Mm -hmm. You get some insight into that, of course, but I, I'd like, I like diving down into that kind of vulnerability. Um, so, yeah. So they said I would have given Rogue a real romance. She deserves okay. love. That's what they said. Yeah. That's what I would change. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that one before, actually, about Rogue. She mm -hmm. has this little, you know, dalliance in this past with yeah. Johnny Silverhand. But it's, yeah, I think there's a lot of pain and, and hurt there. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. She does deserve love. She's an incredible character. Maybe she, maybe she's over it. I don't know. But... <laughs> What was your favorite part about playing her? I just, again, I like her toughness. I like her mm, fearlessness. Mm. She's a fearless woman. And um, it's so fun to play those kind of characters who are just like, yep, yeah, we're just going to go in there. We're going to pick know, butt. Fuck things up. Yeah. yeah. Me, no, you can, you're um, concussed on here. You're fine. <laughs> here we go. Um, yeah, I just like that. I just like how she just pulls her big boots on and she goes in there and does what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't take any shit from anybody. And I think that's, um, you know, that's such an incredible quality that she has. So her confidence is just really, that's a great coat to put on for me sometimes because I'm definitely not like that. But I like just putting that on and just, you know, being that for, you know, four hours in the voice booth is super fun. Yeah, I'm sure you walk away afterwards just like feeling so confident. You're like going to the grocery store and you're just like <laughs> add an extra yeah. oomph into everything. So totally. <laughs> I recently saw that you got a PlayStation, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a PS5, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. and and this question kind of relates um, to that. Have you had a chance to play Cyberpunk at all? Not yet. No, I haven't had a chance to play anything because I got the PlayStation and then um, we uh, ended up redecorating our, our house. <laughs> so uh, my a studio where I do my voice work, my office, total disaster. <laughs> like behind me, I've got some bits and pieces from other rooms in the house. So it, it's a, the house is just a complete mess. Um, so uh, I need to sort that out and then I'm going to plug it in and then I'm going to start playing Baldur's Gate. That's yeah. my first game that I'm going to play. I've got a really long list of games, but you know, I, I will play Hitman, um, but I'm not sure I will play other games that I am necessarily in like Returnal. Uh, I, I don't always want to hear my own voice. It's not going to have a problem yeah. with my voice. I'm just not interested. Interesting. Um, I, I'm interested in other people's performances, huh. but <laughs> There is nobody else in Returnal, so <laughs> I'm going to leave that one for a while. Yeah. Uh, also, it's such a painful journey that she goes on that I I, I find it, you know, it, it, it sort of pains me to revisit it a little bit because mm. um, it was quite hard to occupy that space that she she, she experiences. Um, but I do want to play Baldur's Gate, and I really do want to play Hitman because um, it's fun. Yeah. Super fun. And then... I'm gonna play Life is Strange. <laughs> and oh god, there's so much. There's I, okay. a long list. <laughs> How do people find the time though? Like I'm just like, oh my god, I have to fit this in. Um I will. If but, I um, yeah. if I didn't stream on Twitch, I I wouldn't have time to play video games. That's like what right. I don't play them out because like I have I'm so busy, but I play them on stream. <laughs> so if I didn't work and and play games for a living, I wouldn't be able to play them. 
it's yeah. it yeah, takes yeah, a long yeah. time absolutely well i'm going to dedicate uh, an evening a week there you go <laughs> it's tonight night uh it's gonna be my game afternoon evening and i really can't wait it's long overdue very mm-hmm. much long overdue so yeah so speaking of uh hitman uh, this person says, hi, Jane, I just wanted to say before my question that I'm a huge fan of Hitman and I absolutely am a huge fan of you as Diana. Do you have a favorite Hitman game that you've worked on? If so, which one and why? Well, I think, um, oh gosh, uh, these questions about which are your favorites are so hard because I like them all. But um, I really did like Diana's journey in Hitman 3. I felt that, 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 that you know, what goes on between her and Agent uh, 47 is really interesting and we see some interesting parts of her character, you know, that we don't, we weren't necessarily party to in in the other games. So, you know, the bulk of what she's doing is mission briefings, right? And then we see a little bit of insight into who she is and what's going on in her past and her personal story. Um, and I really liked the way in Hitman Three that that started to come to the fore, and 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 she was kind of acting on on that, or, or you know, so we're led to believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was fascinating and, and really fun. So I guess if, I, if you're going to ask me to choose a favorite, <laughs> that would That's be it. That's the favorite. Yeah. All right. Jumping in. And this is, again, uh, we talked a little bit about this um, before we went live. But my community knows we played as Dusk Falls. And that's what got yeah. this whole me contacting you. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm just going to talk a little bit about as Dusk Falls. And what a great game. Um, it uh, sent me through a loop. It, like, made me at times just so freaking angry. But then I just had, I mean, so it was such a good game um hated your character like I hated her so much I just oh my god and I hated that I hated her because like you know it's it's you and you're amazing and it was your face and I was just like I can't but like oh my gosh yeah I did not like her at all she she was mm. you played her so well like I mean you played her phenomenally it was it was amazing I I just I, I my chat knows like I just kept going off about how great of a performance you were doing um but yeah you I mean and that's great you know it's funny playing a character that is a villain you know or that seemingly is a villain and some people's in some people's playthrough she was not you know in some people's playthrough like they you felt bad for her but um she was a villain in mine and being an actor playing a villain can be hard sometimes especially like you know I don't know you have to get out of your head and know that people are going to hate people are going to hate that character and if they do that means you did a good job and I think a lot of people forget about that, you know? So yeah. this question um, says, what was it like being Sharon Holt in As Dust Falls? I know it must not have been easy dealing with those intense scenarios you had to deal with when making the game and having to act out those scenes. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, As Dust Falls is, was more, uh, I went, well, I guess we could say it was a captured performance, not that we didn't go into the volume and, and, you know, put those suits on with the the little dots and all that stuff. We were dressed in our costumes. We would act out the scenes. They would be filmed and then they would choose, mm. you know this already, but they would choose the peak moment in the scene and they would use a kind of stop motion technique, mm-hmm. which you'll know from playing the game. Um, so I was one of those experiences where I did have the scripts in advance, where I was acting with my fellow performers to really generate true emotion when we got to those peak moments uh and of course you know you you get that continuity with the the voice acting as well as as we um acted out the script um and she is yeah she's a manipulator she's a survivor you know but unlike some of the other characters i play she survives by manipulating Mm -hmm. and uh, and she's extremely self-serving and she will play one person off the other she, i mean she's a very she's a mama bear right like she's mm-hmm. like dedicated to her children but you know <laughs> only to a, a point mm-hmm. you know if it starts to infringe on on her little sort of universe then she'll bite back and playing somebody like that is it's interesting you know it's I want to say it's fun. It's fun in the sense that, gosh, you get to be somebody that you wouldn't dream of being. Oh, yeah. And you get to explore, like, what is it like to have an ego like that? What is it like to to operate, you know, your life this way? Because people do. There are some people who who do that. And it's really deeply fascinating to figure out, you know, why. Um, 
but I also find it hard, you know, these things, they hurt me a little bit, like, you, you know, going into that, oh, you know, there's some big scenes in that thing where, for example, where Dale is shot and she has to, she feels that mm -hmm. definitely. And this was, you know, these are heartbreaking moments. And, um, and I always feel that there's a little tiny cost to, to those big things for, for me. So that can be tiring. Mm -hmm. you know and i have to take really really good care of myself when i'm playing a role like her mm -hmm. but i'm so glad to hear you hated her because <laughs> you're right it means that i you know i didn't you know we mustn't hold back from yeah. these these characters because as i say they do they are out there yeah and they damage people mm -hmm. and um and we can see that you know and also you know we there's people like that in the world and we survive them as well and that's a really important part of that story yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of like she's so dynamic, too, that there are people who, you know, do root for her and do play the game in her favor, even though like they know she's manipulating, manipulating yeah. the entire situation. They still yeah. be they're still like, well, her husband, you know, is a piece of shit. Well, this is a bad card, you know, a bad hand that she's been dealt and all this stuff. But like for me personally, as a player, I was like, that doesn't matter. You can have a bad hand dealt to you. It's your actions that like speak on that. Um, you yeah. know, how are you going to keep following in that path or are you going to try to change that path up and be a better person? And I was like, I don't see this in her at all. So no, yeah. <laughs> I can't, yeah. I can't follow along, but no, my yeah. entire community loved her and, um, just like they loved your performance. Like, you know, just, they loved her in a, I don't know, just in a fact that like she, I don't know, I've got, um, I've got a huge, <laughs> I have a, a lot of people in the LGBTQIA plus community in my, in my community. So we've got a lot of lesbians in the chat that root for the badass like women who are just like taking charge. They don't even care if they're villains. They just want to just, they love them. So oh. yeah, even though I was like, oh, you know, this, this woman, like I don't like her. They were like, no, we love her. And I was like, stop it. Yeah. She's horrible. So yeah. Yeah. it was, it was definitely fun well, playing. Again, she is somebody who makes no apologies, you know, and, and, and this is, um, this is a wonderful thing, you know, for her to just sort of strut through life being mm -hmm. who she is and she doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks about her she's gonna go for what she wants and you know the world is full of people like that and i don't mean to sound sexist but i'm just making an observation a lot of them are men mm -hmm. and you know we get to watch these guys do this in in all sort of aspects of life from the upper echelons of power to you know things that are on like you know things that are happening on the street mm -hmm. and and it is their sort of purview, if that's the right word. So it's interesting to see a woman, yeah, you know, walk that path as well. And to understand the ways in which she, you know, perhaps might be judged by just being in the world the way a lot of people already are, mm -hmm. um, but they're not women. Yeah. So I appreciate, I appreciate them loving her for that. Yeah. So hi, Jane. I absolutely loved your performance in, in As Dust Falls as Sharon. Uh, another one of the favorite ones for you, your favorite questions. I would love to know your favorite part of working on the game or do you have a favorite scene that you worked on in the game? Well, do you know, I, what I, my favorite part of working on that game was working with my fellow actors. There's some great actors in that game. And I just, especially the, the guys who played my sons, um, absolutely splendid. And um, they I just felt such a great connection to them. So I think because I do spend so much of my time in the voice booth by myself, it was a real treat to to work with them. They, they were just absolutely brilliant. Um, mm. So yeah, that was it. I love that. I love that. Connecting. Connecting. Yeah. It can change everything. You could, you know, whoever you're working with can change the entire experience. So that's good. Yeah. I'm glad that they were, it was a good experience in that way. Yeah, it was. So let's bounce back. You talked a little bit about Returnal, um, a, a tiny bit, but I wanted to kind of bounce back to that entire situation for you. So you won a BAFTA for performer in a leading role uh, for your uh, performance in Returnal. Can you talk, can you walk me through that entire experience? Like when you began production, did you ever imagine you'd be there on that stage accepting that award? No, I didn't. It was interesting because we started during COVID. I remember recording the first trailer in my uh, home studio. And I was just like, wow, what is this? This is so unique, so different, like the way she talks and what's going on here. And hmm, interesting. And um, 
and then they brought me into the studio during COVID. I remember um, the studio I was working for would pick me up in a taxi during COVID and they drive me down into the center of London by Oxford Circus and I get out of the car and there'd be like wasteland, like nobody on the streets of London. Mm. It was so freaky. And I go into the studio and we start working on this game. <laughs> That's kind of in a wasteland as well, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, and it was such a unique game and, and such a unique character. Her journey was so different and interesting. But of course, I think, you know, it never occurred to me um, about winning anything for it um, until game season started to come around. And I noticed the game itself was generating a lot of interest at the Game Awards in, in the States, for example, where, where it did very well. Um, and then I, I was like, oh, okay right <laughs> seems to be yeah this game is sort of rising up and in, in, in an interesting way um so it, it was a, a fascinating experience and as i said earlier she was not an easy character to play because of her mental mm -hmm. journey and her deep deep loss that she experiences in her her trauma mm -hmm. um and it's unrelenting for those of you who play the game you'll know how unrelenting it is she doesn't get a break and when she does it just keeps going right back to where she started mm -hmm. but it's worse you know so um it was a, a real honor to win that award for that game and i i just feel incredibly grateful for it um yeah so you said you guys started working in the pandemic so this must have been a very quick production then because that was in the the game awards or uh, the baftas were in 2021 yeah um i won 2022 oh you won 2022 is that right yeah i won i won last year 2022 yes every oh, we just forget was... about months during covid yeah i think because like this past year 2023 was april and then yes. the, uh, the march or whatever and then yes you're right 2022 okay cool so all right. Yeah, I was right. like, there's no way it was done in a year and a half. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, okay, cool. So you won for 2022. Yeah. My bad. Sorry. I think earlier I had yeah. said 2021 as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. So it started in 2020. And Got then, I, you know, maybe because um, perhaps the recording of it was a bit more, well, I want to use the word simplistic. It wasn't, mm -hmm. but less complicated because yeah. I was the only cast member in it. Well, that's not true. There was a young lad who played my boy. So he, he was in as well. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's just myself. And um, uh, yeah, so I think perhaps because of that, you know, it was it wouldn't have taken years and years because it, 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 there's, you know, if you think about the number of cast members in Baldur's Gate, oh, yeah. massive. Uh -huh. And then there's just two of us in Returnal. Yeah. So I had somebody in my in my community uh, was playing that game when it came out and would come back and, and chat and and report to us like you know they're like i'm gonna give up it's so i can't like I, it's so difficult i can't do it and then they would come back and they'd be like i beat that one boss like i'm on to the next one and they they were relentless in, in, in completing this game and recently when when they heard that you were going to be on the stream they said that um your performance helped them get through that game like if your performance uh -huh. wasn't like as wasn't how it was and nuanced and just like calm you know like you kept him playing the game he said if it was any different like he would have he would have given up so oh yeah wow. that's yeah. such a nice compliment thank you very much yeah and i haven't i haven't uh, i don't have a ps5 so i have not been able to play the game uh but just from his experience it looked just like brutal you know they just having to beat these bosses and stuff so yeah i i just wanted to make sure you got that message that you helped i'm sure there's other people that you've helped you know during their journey in that game Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you very much. So what video game role did you enjoy doing the most <laughs> out of all of your video? You got to pick one. You have to. Okay. You're forcing me to pick a favorite. Yes. It's not my favorite. Oh, okay. But I do enjoy it very much. I have no favorites. Remember? Okay. But <laughs> I do enjoy this role very much. I love Diana in, in Hitman. I just love her so much. I love her her class, her intelligence again. Um, she's, you know, her strong moral fiber, although she's sending somebody out to shoot people, but you know, she's sending the, him out to shoot the bad guys. And I, I like her sense of justice and, and um, yeah, I just, I just think she's a great character and I always enjoy playing her. I love her sense of humor, her wry sense of humor. Um, and I just, um, 
think she's great. Mm -hmm. And every time I go in to play Diana, I just have a really good time. Um, so it would, ha you know, she's the one I enjoy a lot. And it's so fun too, like just being able to to come back as another character and to have that opportunity to breathe life into them again, especially when you like them so much. Um, yeah. I can only imagine like, yeah, how special that is for you. And they connect with you more because you've played them and you've, you know, you've given them life so much more than maybe some other characters. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, there's so many games that you've been in. I've only played, I think, three of the games you've been in. But Hitman has been on my list for, oh my gosh, so long. Like, it's literally on my list on my panels and my Twitch channel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I cannot wait to eventually play that. Yeah. Talking about long lists of games, they they never end. They never end. No. So. Wow. <laughs> um, so, with such an extensive background in acting, is there a particular series or video game franchise that you would love to be a part of in the future? Hmm. Well, oh yes. I mean, <laughs> do you know, I, I would love, I'd love to be in a game that really foregrounds female stories. Um, and th that really takes into account the, a woman's experience. Um, in a very complex, nuanced, interesting, vibrant way. Mm. So it doesn't really matter to me who's telling that story, if it's a big AAA or an independent or whatever. Um, I, I would just really love to have something like like that in, in a game. Um, and I know there's you know some of them out there, but it hasn't been in my experience yet to be a, a part of that. And I would like to performance capture it. So I'm acting with other amazing actresses, mm. bringing uh, characters to life and actors, act male actors, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, or people, let's just say people, um, bringing a more, um, yeah, fem female narrative. I love that. Or perhaps non-binary narrative, yeah. you know, to the fore. That really interests me. So, yeah. So you mentioned a little bit um, earlier that you teach voice acting um, yes. lessons. Now, um, in talking about this, this uh, I guess, video game franchise that you would, or game that you would enjoy being in, have you, with all of your background, with how long you've been in the industry, have you ever thought about making a game yourself? Like getting yeah, together you know with people. What, uh, just to, yeah, because there's this fabulous uh, actor here in the UK named Abubakar Salim. Uh, and he's just started his own studio. Uh, and the purpose of which is he's working on films and such. But the purpose of which I think originally was to make, um, you know, games. Uh, he was in Assassin's Creed and, and oh, okay. he's done all kinds of amazing things. He's phenomenal. And I was thinking about him the other day because, you know, as actors, we do we'll make a short film together we'll 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 you know do a web series we'll we'll do something for the stage mm -hmm. and i was thinking gosh what would it take for us to make a game uh, and and it was the first time it occurred to me i thought hmm that would be really interesting to do that but of course i have no idea what the first step would be for that mm -hmm. and so it would be a pretty steep learning curve but I think it's a really interesting proposition. Yeah. And one of the things I'm, I'm, you know, one of the things that I've so enjoyed about, for example, BAFTA is that it's given me the opportunity to, to talk to game developers uh, be, because BAFTA is a kind of hub, if you will, in London, an actual physical building mm -hmm. where people meet and network and talk and, and share ideas. And, and, uh, I, and I've so enjoyed uh, doing that. And I think, you know, I'm starting to wonder, is do I have a hidden agenda meeting people who know how to make a game? Yeah. So that maybe we can make one together. Um, so, yeah, it, it's starting to occur to me as a possibility. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I, I don't know, like, uh, do you know Brian and Amelia Descart? Um, they were in, um, they were in Detroit Become Human. They, they, um, and they stream on Twitch. But yeah, they were in Detroit Breaking Human that kind of like put them like it out in the world in the video game industry. And then, uh, yeah, they they are making their own game. And um, yeah, I don't know, maybe just like follow Brian and Amelia on on Twitter. Um, and 
yeah, like maybe I can connect you with them if you have any questions because they are just, they are so amazing. And they're just like these lights, these bright lights shining and they want to help, you know, everybody around us and, and, and help other people who want to achieve, you know, things that, you know, they have knowledge in, but yeah, they have yeah. a game coming out. They've, you know, did the production for it. They like, I mean, they recorded it. They did everything. It was crazy. Um, wow. It hasn't come out yet. I can't remember exactly when it comes out, but yeah, I think back to them and I'm like, they probably have a lot of knowledge. So if, if I can connect you with them. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. I yeah. will definitely have a look. Yeah. 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 But Good those are the, them. yeah. And I know there's other people too, who are, are doing the same thing. You know, they're, they're getting together and I think it's just about connecting and, you know, getting a conversation going and seeing, yeah. But I, I agree. It's like, yeah, where do you start? And I, but I have seen people do it and I have seen, you know, that their trailer is amazing. And I'm like, okay, people are doing this. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'll definitely connect you with them. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Cause I think sometimes I think, oh, wish I could do that. And then you realize, oh, I can, you can do it. Do yeah. You can. Yeah. Um, because people, <laughs> and so therefore why, why shouldn't we? Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you've like, I don't know, like you've, you've been in this industry, you know, and, and you've, you've done so many amazing things. And I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I, this could be your next thing. This could be it. Oh, yeah. thanks. <laughs> that sweet. Mm, uh -oh, something's happening. We're manifesting <laughs> it. I don't know if you're into manifesting, but we're manifesting oh, yeah. it right now. Um, yeah. Universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is our um, last question from from the community. Uh, this is another kind of advice question. So I don't know if, you know, we've already touched on that, but maybe there's something else you can speak on to this. But it says, hey, Jane and Katie, hope both of you are doing well. And belated happy birthday, Jane. Wishing you the best. My question is, can you give some advice to young people like me who are still fighting for their dreams? It's tiring, to be honest, when the dream seems unachievable. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Katie, you just man mentioned manifesting and this sense of putting things out there. I think that is a very important part of it. So we, you're right. We did talk about this earlier and I was speaking about it in much more practical terms, work on your craft. Um, and, you know, tenacity is important too. And I think also really imagining it imagining it, seeing it, feeling it, mm -hmm. feel where you want to be, have that experience in your body, you know, already. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, acting is a craft and it's also a group sport, you know, it's a group effort, yeah. right? Um, so therefore community is also very important. So make sure that you're still, you, you are putting yourself out there, um, to meet people, to connect, to have conversations, just like we're doing right now, Katie. Mm -hmm. I mean, just what, what just happened is I, I said, Oh, I'm interested in doing this. And you're like, I know somebody. Mm -hmm. And, and this is this, the, it's these little moments, you know, that can leapfrog us towards what it is we're after. And I do think that being an actor, when you're, you're, you're going for something so deeply important to you, the stakes are high in the sense that we can get very discouraged. We can feel oh, it's never going to happen, or what's the point? And it's really those, we need the skills to deal with those moments. Those are the moments that are, you know, really the most difficult when you kind of start questioning, can I do this? You, you maybe lose a little bit of self-belief. So that's important too, isn't it? To, to, to identify for yourself, what are the skills that I need to help me through those moments where I'm losing a bit of hope? Mm -hmm. Um and so if you can get all those things in place, and sometimes what helps me when I'm feeling like, oh, what's the point of all this? It's my friends that help me through. Or it's seeing a, a film or a, a going to the theater and, and realizing, oh, yes, I want to be a storyteller. That's so important to me. Mm -hmm. It's too important for me to get give up because look what that actor just did they move me so much and I want to be a part of that and that refuels the desire to keep going mm -hmm. so yeah I understand it's hard but just keep going don't give up mm -hmm. work work on yourself work on your craft I love that you said that because for me doing these interviews, this recharges me and it's like, oh yeah, like just talking about Shakespeare, I'm like, I'm going to go look up and see if there's any Shakespeare plays in LA because like I want to go watch a Shakespeare play now, you know, like just yeah. having these conversations with fellow actors, especially in the voiceover industry, it just, yeah, it, it just refuels you. So 
yeah, just putting yourself in that space to, to be motivated and be inspired. I, I definitely relate to that on a personal level. Yeah. Yeah. We must nourish ourselves. Uh, we must, must nourish our artistic selves and then, you, you know, ourselves through our day to day life. Those are very, very important uh, things to do. And we mustn't forget to do that. Yeah. Well, this has been such an amazing interview. Thank you again so much for coming on. This has just been a, such a joy for me. And as I kind of glance over to the chat every so often, such a joy for them as well. They absolutely love this. Again, if anybody wants to check out what Jane has going on, there is the Twitter and the Instagram and chat. Go follow, go go engage. Um, and uh, yeah. So speaking of, uh, is there any last words you want to say? Anything you'd like to promote? Um, and, uh, yeah, anything you got going on? Well, um, I, I have a couple of games upcoming, but of course huh, we're yeah. never allowed to speak about them. Um, but I, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming. It's really meaningful, you know, to have these interchanges with, um, with people who play the games, um, that, that we're in as actors. And, um, I, I just wanted to say, just say that. Thank you so much for for playing them and 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 you know whenever you reach out, it's it's lovely. It's a really nice gift mm. uh, for me and and I think for for most of us who act in games, we we really do appreciate it. So, and is there any other place besides your Instagram and Twitter that they can keep up to date, or is that the main the main places? I think that's it. Okay, I'm on LinkedIn. I I will say I've said this before. I'm really crap with social media, but they are touch points for me, you know, that I, I will every now and then drop something in there. Uh, so yeah, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, chat, I'm going to see Jane off. So I'm going to go to a BRB screen and then we're going to say our goodbyes. Uh, but thank you again, everybody who has tuned in for this. And thank you once again, Jane, for coming on. I very much appreciate it. And chat, I will be back very soon. All right.